Hey guys, it's Raul again, and today I'll be doing my spoiler-free review of The Crowns of Crosswald by D.E. Knight. And I actually ended up winning this copy from Sam from Sam's Nonsense. She was doing a giveaway for this book, and I actually ended up uh, receiving a copy of this book. And then I realized when it got here that it was an ARC and that this book doesn't come out until July 21st. So I was really excited to have gotten an advanced copy of something so that I can go ahead and review on my channel before it comes out. So that is what you guys are going to see today is my full thoughts on this amazing, amazing new middle grade fantasy series. The Crowns of Crosswald follows our main character Ivy Lovely and at the very beginning of the book she is a servant who works in a castle and she works in the kitchens and stuff and that's kind of all she's really known is that she's worked uh, in this kitchen for the last kind of like... 16 years because she's 16 years old so she's worked in these kitchens in this castle she's not really being treated uh very well by like the the head of the kitchens and stuff and she ends up getting kicked out at the very beginning of the book uh and gets she kind of has nowhere to go she takes one of her little kind of dragon companions because in this world they have l these little mini dragons that are the ones that kind of cook the food so she has her little mini dragon companion that she takes off because she has nowhere to go and ends up kind of discovering this other world of magic and getting invited to attend the Halls of Ivy which is the magic school within Crosswald. Now Crosswald is a world that's already full of magic so magic isn't new to Ivy. It's not like she is living in the real world and stumbled upon this world of magic. Magic is everywhere. It's a magical world and everybody knows about magic and magic is divided kind of between your social circles so depending on what kind of social circle you're in is the magic that you kind of like end up kind of learning if you do get invited to attend this school. So Ivy gets invited to attend the school as a Scrivness and Scrivness are kind of the magic system that the kind of middle class, lower class kind of people use and it's based on kind of ink and quill and memory and they're kind of in charge of documenting things and it's a really really interesting magic system and then you have the higher ups who are the royals and obviously that's basically self-explanatory the royals have kind of a more traditional type of magic system that's you know familiar to a lot of us where they can just use spells and cast things so ivy goes into the halls of ivy which is the school to learn to be a scrivenist after she gets kicked out of this castle at the very beginning and everything kind of takes off from there she starts to learn about this evil queen who everybody fears in this world nobody's seen the evil queen before she doesn't really leave her castle or go into town but as she's kind of going to get her like supplies and start with this whole schooling thing the evil queen actually comes into town for the first time so that kind of begins to bring a lot of suspicion with everybody here in Crosswall, they don't know what's going on, they don't know why the Queen, after so many years, finally decides to go into town. They suspect that something's going on, that she's looking for something. That's kind of where the intrigue and everything starts to happen in this book, is when people actually start to see the Evil Queen and they don't know what's going on because they're not really familiar with the Evil Queen being around them at all. So it definitely gets really intriguing after that and you slowly begin to find out what's going on with everything, what's going on with Ivy and the Evil Queen, what connections kind of everything shares. And I absolutely ended up loving this book so, so much. I went into this one very, very blindly. I really had no idea what this was about. I had heard it was kind of like Harry Potter-ish with like the magic school and everything, but that's it. That's all I really knew. So I went into this one fairly blindly. And like I said, I ended up absolutely adoring this book from the very, very beginning, literally from the prologue. I started to enjoy everything that was going on. I absolutely loved D.E. Knight's writing style. That was probably one of the best parts of this book was the writing style. It was so whimsical and it flowed so well. It was so easy to read and so easy to get into. And I loved the way that she ended up kind of building this entire world. Like at the very beginning, you don't really know much about this magic system. You know that there's kind of that divide between these two types of magic. And the one thing I really enjoyed about that is that within the school, they actually end up having these two types of magic. You have the royals and you have the people studying to be Scrivenous actually taking classes together. So I liked that they included 
both of these people that there wasn't that divide of like social status and everything within the school itself. Everybody was learning together and I really enjoyed that about it. But you don't know much about this magic system from the beginning and kind of as Ivy starts to go to classes and learn things, you as the reader start to learn a little bit more about this magic system and how things work and I absolutely love that about it. Like the world building in here was perfect. I loved it. I love the fact that we didn't know much at the beginning, that you kind of had to keep reading to learn more, and as Ivy learned more stuff, you learned more stuff, and it was just, I absolutely loved it. That was also one of my just like amazing favorite parts of this book was just that world building and just the introduction and that flow throughout this book of the world and of this magic system and kind of building this world from the ground up, and I absolutely loved it. Now, like I mentioned before, this is a book that is very kind of heavily Harry Potter influenced, so I feel like it's going to appeal to a lot of people, but also maybe turn off a lot of people, so it kind of just depends on where you hold Harry Potter up in your life. Uh, for me, I enjoy Harry Potter, but Harry Potter is not the holy grail of all books, but I know of some people, Harry Potter is kind of the holy grail, so anything that kind of tries to imitate or is influenced by Harry Potter people will kind of stay away from because they don't you know want to kind of ruin that whole enjoyment of Harry Potter but other people are going to absolutely appreciate the fact that is somewhat influenced on Harry Potter at least with the aspects of like the magic school and some of the things that happen it is it is influenced with Harry Potter so I loved 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 that influence that it had at least me personally like I said because Harry Potter to me is not like the holy grail of all books so I loved the fact that it had those influences but still managed to stay really really unique in its concept and its world and its characters and I absolutely loved that about it like I said she has this little kind of little mini dragon companion that I absolutely loved like this little dragon companion named Humboldt was the best and I love him and I want a little mini dragon after reading this because I thought he was absolutely fantastic and I loved all of the other characters that were going on. I loved kind of the little villain antagonists that were in the school. I loved the friends that Ivy made. I really enjoyed all of the side characters, the teachers and professors and everything were just great within the school and I felt like they all kind of had their parts. Like none of these characters were in there just as filler but they all had kind of a part in this story and in the bigger picture of Ivy's story as she's kind of figuring things out as things are happening. Um, I don't really want to give too much on the story because this is definitely a book that is very enjoyable to go in not knowing much about it and kind of just discovering this world as it goes because it was absolutely fantastic to discover this world and to see things unfold and to see Ivy figure things out and to fi figure out kind of this mystery that was going on within the school with like these people that she was, you know, trying to like investigate and everything. I really, really, really love this book so so much more than I was expecting. I ended up giving it a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved it. I highly recommend this book for anybody who enjoys middle grade fantasy. Like I said, this was just like just so well written, just so well plotted and so well planned and, and built and oh, it was just such an incredibly just fun fun read. I did not want to put this one down. This was definitely one of those books that I just like wanted to keep sitting down with this one and finding out what was going to happen, how things were going to unfold, what was going to happen next, and I absolutely love this one. So yeah guys, that is it for my spoiler-free review on The Crowns of Crosswald by D.E. Knight. Comment down below and let me know if this is something that interests you guys in reading, if you guys have read The Crowns of Crosswald. I highly recommend you guys pick this book up. Like I mentioned, it comes out on July 21st of 2017, so if you guys enjoy middle grade fantasies at all, this is definitely one that I highly recommend you guys check out because I absolutely loved, loved, loved this book. This is probably now my favorite middle grade fantasy series that is currently out there. I cannot wait for book two. I'm super excited to continue on with the series and to see what else D.E. Knight kind of creates within this story. I'm super excited for it. Thank you guys all again for watching and I will see you all next time.